Hello my soccer universe and welcome to another season preview. Uh, this time we are talking about the two leagues that start this weekend which of course are Spain and Italy and since it's two leagues and not five as I in last uh, week's video I have a little bit more time to talk about it but you know I still will mostly focus on the numbers but I'll give you a few of my inklings that I have for uh, certain teams as well. So again, what I'm gonna do in this video is I will first um, uh, talk a little bit about the leagues and how excited, um, not excited, you know, what what uh, struck out for me or since we last saw these teams. Uh, then we look at the projections for uh, the season based on the ratings that I'm choosing, which is the Club Ilo rating. It's the SPI rating from um, 530, 38, um, and also based on the bookmakers also, and then we'll see based on those, what are the, uh, are the chances of the teams finishing wherever uh, they will. So um, just as a little outline, um, we will start first in Spain, and then we'll add, end in Serie A, which you already know is my favorite of the big leagues uh, to watch out for. So let's start in Spain, uh, and you know, for me, there's only one story over the entire um, <laughs> preseason. And while I'm wearing Real Madrid, who have been winning La Liga, uh, in the end, at a canter, I thought there was a short period where you might have thought it might get tight, um, and won the champ Champions League. Their transfer summer was a uh, done very quickly, although I think they might still be coming something, maybe. Um, and... Other than that, it was rather quiet, but all the noise were made by Barcelona to a degree where I have to, I have to say I'm more and more losing my sympathies for that particular club. Uh, the financial acrobatics that they're doing, mortgaging their future to buy players to win now is just a path that is not only not Barcelona, but it's not sustainable for the future. Um, Honestly, especially if you get an old striker like Le Lewandowski, it reeks a little bit like when you went to skirt Ronaldo uh, four years ago. That was a similar feeling where, yeah, this was an aging striker that can still give you something. And he held up the end of his bargain. But on the other side, uh, I think he held back the development of this team. And this is what's so annoying me, that there is a good core, good young core at Barca. But you now buy a Lewandowski, you uh, splash the cash for Rafinha, you already bought a bunch of strikers, and you have more strikers than anyone else. I think maybe one of the uh, more recent signs was Jules Conde, um, Rafinha pro, pro, probably also, but did you really need all these players, especially in your dire financial situation? I mean, you were claiming poverty just half a year, year ago, and now you have uh, one of the biggest transfer spendings of the entire summer. And with all the financial acrobatics at this moment, actually, uh, I know this uh, video posts on a Thursday. I'm shooting this um, uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, you can see the sunset. It doesn't make, to me, they cannot even register the players at this moment because all these financial tricks, even La Liga sees that this. I mean, they're setting up an entire company to uh, buy themselves that gives them 100, 150 million euros. No, this is not going to work. And to me, this current regime is about almost as bad as the Bartomeu regime. Again, you wheel out big name after big, big name. You're not the Galacticos. This is not Mesquion Club. You basically are copying Real Madrid and you're not really good at that. And for that reason, I honestly have to say, Barcelona to me is almost a dead club at this, at, at this point. And I don't know. I... If they have success with this ridiculous model, I'm not sure uh, if they should ever uh, use the Motto Mescion Club again, because it, it, it is an absolute ridiculous state of affairs. Um, as, as I said, I will. this is the first season where I, offici where I can officially declare. I mean, my love for Barcelona has been waning uh, over the past few, few years, especially they are big baby because they are so badly uh, governed and uh, I like a well-run club that can has a philosophy in Barcelona 10 years ago they had the philosophy with the Masia with players coming up 
as soon as they got into the whole, um, you know, getting superstar after superstar, and yes, Barcelona can get a superstar here and there. I don't deny them that, but this is not the way to build your team. I honestly think that uh, there it's a huge gamble, and in 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 a, in a way, I can very well see that the crash could happen because you're mortgaging your future for uh, 20, I mean, your TV deals. And just, if you want to keep up with Ramon, uh, Ra Ra just, just look at the TV deal. You sold off 25% for your future earnings for the next 25 years. Real Madrid is getting the exact same amount of money. However, they are not having to give away 25%. It's madness. It is absolute madness. And with that, yes, I think the Barcelona squad is quite a useful squad that they have at, at this moment. And I think with the, I, I, if they can reach as a player and this squad can, can play, I think they potentially could challenge Real Madrid. I, I think that Real Madrid is a little bit more settled, although with a club like Real Madrid, you also never know where it is going. It is clear that this is a title race between the two big ones. And it is also an indictment on La Liga because last season, last season was the one season where really a Sevilla could have snuck in and maybe make it make a title challenge, and they couldn't. Uh, it is so disappointing. Yes, we had an Atletico Madrid winning the year before, but they're also almost an established power. It was really uh, it was a season last year where uh, Betis and the Sevilla, especially the two Seville clubs, really. If they would have gotten a run together, and I'm looking squarely at you, Sevilla, because you had the you had all the tools in place, and you messed messed it up, and you remain the most frustrating team in Europe. And so I'm not holding my breath for any of these teams to sneak in there. It is this season with all the investments that we made and the way Real Madrid is structured is very much a two-way title race. How two-way? Well. Here are uh, the projections based on these ratings that I collected. And I'm almost a little bit relieved to see the Real Madrid are still the, fav the favorites because from all the talk that we hear, especially coming from Catalonia, it's all, yeah, Barca is back, Barca is back, Barca is back, and we're going to win the Champions League. Um, hold your horses a little bit, and we can still see that at least, and this is mainly down to the Bukes and the Ilo rating, Real Madrid is still seen as the bigger project. And also uh, Real Madrid with, uh, you know, getting Germany and so on in and already a bit of transfers. They are actually working on rejuvenating their squad. Um, then there's a big difference. Uh, the, uh, the Atletico Madrid who kind of sit by themselves a little bit. I'm very unsure what to think about Atleti Atletico Madrid. And Villarreal may be boosted by the Champions League round, but I think they also have the tools to get in there. Sevilla, I'm not so sure. Any, uh, anymore how much I can trust Sevilla. Gut feeling is that they will still be in uh, top four, but you know, I could see Real, uh, Villarreal uh, challenging. And I want to see if Real Sociedad and Real Betis can keep up their recent form um, of the other teams. Yeah, Valencia under new management of Gattuso hmm, remains to, to be seen. It seems pretty, pretty clear that up until Athletic Bilbao, those are the top eight that probably will make a run for Europe. The remainder is more or less in the middle and a uh, fight against re relegation where I found, well, what happened is that both, uh, two, the both directly promoted sides, Valladolid and Almeria, are actually uh, projected to stay in the league with Elche, Girona and Mallorca going down. Um, now my uh, secretly favorite team, Celta, uh, is sitting here at 10th. I hear the rumors that they are probably in... There is a really, really rough season for for, for them in store, and I'm also wondering if Rayo can come, can um, repeat the feat from last uh, season. Just uh, to uh, from these graphics, you see the on the side of the green to uh, kind of back, back it up 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 with numbers. Uh, Real Madrid 61% for champions, then it's Barcelona 29, 99%. The rest is split between between, between Atletico Madrid uh, and Sevilla, and a little bit Real Madrid uh, in there. And it's Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, who are the three teams that one expects to be in Europe with uh, Via Real and Sevilla gunning for the second place. Uh, with all of the other teams and outside side chances. As for rele rele relegation, 
Uh, you see already that Mallorca seems to be uh, for conclusion. Girona does not look, 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 look good, and then you know Elche. Yeah, they have been staying so so in for 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 two seasons, but also uh, those are the teams at the moment. Cadiz, maybe we have to see. I, I actually think it might be quite exciting for the bottom part of the, of the league. Now the league kicks off Friday evening. Um, between Osasuna and Sevilla. Uh, of course, the first real highlight is probably Barcelona against Rayo. And I think the biggest tension there is which players will show up? Which players will show up? Uh, Real Madrid starts in Almeria. They actually have three away games in a row to start such a season. I, it's uh, when I compiled the fig fit of the, the victory in space, the only uh, league where we don't have uh, that all the teams that have a home game to start the season have an away game in, in the next round. So I found that interesting. Um, if I look at other uh, matchups, I mean, I'm why the lead against Via Vera. I'm a little bit curious about that one. Um, but other than that, it's not. I mean, there's a little Madrid derby, Getafe, Atletico. I think Atletico is also starts only three away games or something, something like that. So yeah, I think I will f have to find my footing with La Liga this season. Uh, if it is again Real Madrid against Barcelona, of course I'm gonna watch because it's exciting. However, for the first time in a long time, in almost to, in pretty much 20 years or so, I think my full support will not be behind Barcelona in this case. I'm swinging Real Madrid if I had to uh, choose between those two, because despite them, Superliga, blah, 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 and all the, the, these things, what they are doing seems to be just a little bit smarter. With that thought, I'm leaving you uh, for Spain and we go all the way over to Italy. And we're going from sunset to sunrise, which I think is a little bit more uh, appropriate for the start of the season. And I decided let's give the Milan Centenary shirt its channel debut. Uh, to kind of match the Real Madrid centenary shirt, uh, two of the finest centenary shirts to have put out there. Now, Italy, uh, the Serie A season will probably, probably be again the, uh, at least from the onset, the tightest title race because it is really, in, in many ways, it's really hard to tell who is going, who is actually the real favorite? Uh, because you can find flaws with every, uh, with every team. Uh, you can see, I mean, champions Milan, uh, probably have overachieved last season. They lost Van Kessie, which probably will be a big hole in midfield. Although I actually think the hole is not as big. And then there were rumors, uh, um, uh, the other day that maybe Tonali might join Arsenal, which I think would be a blow to the gut for many Milan fans including here, because I think he will be an essential player. On the other side, Milan uh, reinforced, uh, especially in the offense, a whole lot. Uh, bring in the Catalare. That's the way it comes from the name itself. Uh, <laughs> man himself. That's how he, he pronounces it. I think even Adli is going to bring a whole lot. I'm not sure about Origi. And I think there might be another signing coming. And the team was already working pretty darn well, especially towards the end of the season. But again, might be a transition uh, season there. Uh, Inter, of course, got Lukaku back. Um, uh, it's also making deals moving forward, but I think Lukaku is definitely uh, the biggest signing uh, there. On the other side, there are still some rumors, and they had the deepest squad. But there are some rumors that at least Skrinja is heavily linked with PSG and might be leaving. So um, give or take what uh, what's going to happen. I'm, I'm even not sure if Lautaro uh, would stay around for all, all, all the much. So there's a lot of stuff hanging there in, in the balance. Juve, I think for a long time I thought that Juve had an excellent uh, Mercato. Uh, bring in the likes of Pogba and Di Maria. Yes. Second time around never works as well as the first time time around, but Pogba needs to feel a little bit the love. Di Maria, I think, is still at this age and under very much one of the most underrated players out there. So I really like that signing. Um, you got in Brema, who has been the best uh, defender in Serie A last season, kind of making up for the loss of Chiellini, although the I think they are very different. However, you also lose the Licht to Bayern and you lose Pogba to an injury. 
So yeah, uh, and there's still some holes, holes will be filled, uh, seemingly uh, at least Rabio seems to be out of the off of door, so worry of uh, UV fans. So then you have, uh, you know, the other top four team, Napoli last, last season, seems to be completely falling apart, although bringing in uh, seemingly Raspadori and Simeone. So I think they're they are jiggling up the squad a little bit and... Uh, Many people are down on Napoli, and but I do have a feeling that uh, it might not be against them. I mean, yes, you lose uh, a club icons like Insigne and like Mertens, uh, but you still have Aussie men, and I think the squad in its uh, you know Fabian. Uh, I think Fabian Ruiz was not there anymore. It does it? It, is, it doesn't matter. But I think um, the squad building might not be that bad. However, the biggest headlines out there. Definitely Roma. Uh, the excitement in Rome, especially after winning the Conference League, are sky high. They got Dybala, they got Matic, they got Vinaldom. Jose Mourinho uh, nixed a transfer of Zaniolo to uh, Spurs um, to kind of keep everything together. I still think the Roma squad is maybe a tad thin to mount a title challenge, but I think uh, for a top four, four finish, I think Roma would be my uh, one of my favorite favorites. Personally, uh, it will be intoxicating to watch Roma. I really think that Roma is the team to watch out for. However, I'm not sure in what direction it will go. It can work out beautifully. As I said, expectations are sky high at this very moment. Uh, I liken this to the transfer spendings that PSG did last summer, where then the expectations went through the roof. You had all the uh, positive vibes, but also huge expectations there. And I really hope for Roma fans that it will work out and that Jose, Jose Mourinho will make a push. So, yeah, very, very exciting. We also have uh, a new, you know, a new team coming up that might make some noise in Monza. You know, uh, the old gang Berlusconi and Galliani coming in. Barbara Berlusconi wanted to spend uh, so that Monza will make it into the Champions League. Uh, Galliani talking down, you know, let's consolidate first. Uh, it's another one of those where it could be spectacular failure. I also think that it is not really, really clear who will get uh, relegated because there are so many candidates out there. Um, and tip typically one, or if, if, if not two, of the promoted sides are coming back down again. Um, Cremonese... This time around seems like the team that everyone says they are going down, uh, where Monza should stay in. Lecce, I really thought the last time Lecce were up, they should have stayed in. We gotta see. Um, and then we have like the usual can can guys with Salernitana, who barely escaped last season. We have Empoli, who fell off at the second half of the season. We have Spezia, who everyone says, yeah, maybe they should go down. <sighs> Exciting season. So. Let's put numbers behind my feelings here. Uh, who are the favorites based on the uh, combined rating from the three sources that I told at the beginning of the, of, of, of the video? And uh, Inter are the favorites. Um, and, you know, as a Milan fan, I'm not so unhappy for Inter to be uh, the favorites. Seriously. They have the deep, deep, deep squad. And as it stands... They probably have even the best squad uh, and should should be considered fave favorites. I see last season's title more. Uh, Milan definitely a bit overperforming, but also Inter throwing it away. So, Inter being the favorites, I'm fine, fine with that. Milan, I think, are strong enough uh, to be in second. And I think Juve fell a little bit off, uh, especially with the loss of Pogba. I was a bit surprised that Napoli is still ahead of Roma, but I think this is down to uh, especially the Ealer rating, where Roma was not as high um, as, Nap as Napoli. Uh, but you see, it's rather, rather close. I personally would put Roma ahead of Napoli. I wanna also, I'm also curious to see if Atalanta will have a bounce back season because it was a horrendous season for Atalanta, although starting up brightly, uh, it was the worst under Gasparini. Um, Atalanta again losing a few plays, but that hasn't really held them back. And then Lazio and Fiorentina, uh, round out the top eight. And then there is a clear cut. And it's kind of a cruel twist of fate that there are now eight teams considered that could make a challenge. 
whereas uh, there are only seven Euro European spots. I think Sassolo and Hellas are kind of in the in, in, in between. I don't know where Torino will go uh, with coach Juric in particular. They should, but then it's not a happy camp right there. And I think starting Udine, who will probably, and Bologna, who will probably just about finish mid, mid table, then we are entering slowly the rele relegation zone, which gets serious starting Empoli, but Sampdoria is a team that you gotta be worried about as well. So, uh, and I would hate to see Sampdoria go down. Um, with a little bit of shock, I realized that if I look now at all the Serie A teams that I have that are ec ec in Serie A, I have only 13 and one of them I'm wearing here. So uh, that's a little bit concerning for my collection personally. I have lost quite a few teams, especially with two last season. Uh, it was a bit of a blow, but you know, it's only an excuse to get another team in. Uh, so yeah, now to put numbers again to the um, uh, to this graph, um, I have Inter 47% becoming champions. It's similar to last year, Milan 2023, Juve 14, uh, Napoli in the Roma 7 and 6 uh, respectively and as for the Champions League spots yes uh, it is that the uh, top 3 uh, uh, like Milan, Inter and um, Juve they should be, they should make it uh, into the Champions League and then it's probably between, La uh, between Napoli and the Roma however it might change I think the league is tired, tired enough as for Relegation, um, Salernitana are the also favorites together with Crem Cremonese, then with Spezia and Lecce and potentially Sampdoria and Empoli also featuring in there with 16, uh, some, some, some Sampdoria 16, Empoli 35. So, I mean, some Sampdoria not quite there. First round, it starts out with the defending champions, sold out San Zero Crowd, 70,000, Milan Udine. And it's not one of those games. Milan Udine have, has been a really, really tough fixture for Milan. So not happy with that one. Um, Sampdoria at uh, Atalanta might, might tell, tell us a lot about these teams already. Um, Inter start against Lecce. Uh, although I think my eyes on, uh, for, 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 for the late game will be actually on Monza. Uh, and then, yeah, um, what, what, what else is Sal, 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 Tana, Roma? Uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see what Roma will, 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 will do. And then uh, Verona, Na, Napoli, USA, Solo. I think those are normally normal the biggest games to start it all off. Oh, st uh, get started. In any case, uh, please let me know what, how you think those two leagues are, are, are going. How much do you agree with the predictions coming from my ratings? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you uh, want to stay updated on these leaks and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day